Outdoor People, welcome back to the channel. Pots and petals, everything allotment and garden related. Now as you can see by the sky, we've been awarded a lovely sunny day today, which is one hell of an improvement from the last five days. It's been bloody cold here in the UK. I've still got a cold, but I am slowly getting better. So today I thought I'd come down and get all those jobs that I found yesterday start ticking them off my list. So let's crack on guys and see what we can get through today. So as I said yesterday, you're gonna have to excuse the wind, sorry guys. I'm gonna trim along down here with the strimmer, get this all nice and tidied up. I'm not too worried about the weeds, but we've got some mint down here, and then we've got some oregano. We've also got some bulbs that pop up in the spring. So I'm going to get this all tidied up along here and also the bit along my, my wooden fence. So right along there. Now I don't think my strimmer is going to be able to do all of that and my grass paths. So I'll be popping down tomorrow and I'll just, I'll mow this today, but I'll strim that up tomorrow. Because I don't think I've got enough battery to get through all of that because it has grown a little bit wild. Right, let's tidy it up. So that's the strimming done along here. Looks a little bit tidier. I'm not too worried about the wildlife because we've got plenty of wild areas on the plot. So I did just brush through it before I started strimming it to make sure there weren't any, any small critters in there. But yeah, looking a lot more tidier. Now I just need to mow the main grass path and see if I can get a bit of strimming done along there as well. I've still got a little bit of battery left.
winter now. There's nothing better than grass just freshly trimmed. The smell, the look, just everything about it. So I didn't quite manage all the way at the end. The trimmer has given up the ghost. But we will finish that job off tomorrow. I'm not a huge fan of leaving jobs half done, but I can't charge it up right now. But yeah, it's looking a lot more neater down here. I've just got this little bit to finish off tomorrow. So I'll charge that up. I'm gonna cut some of this back so I can get to the shed a little bit more easier. But I'll leave the, um, the buttercups alone. So I just thought we'd pop into the poly house and see how everything's getting on in here. So the tomatoes have actually put on a fair bit of growth. They're starting to get a lot thicker and sturdier because they were quite spindly little plants. So I'm happy with those. And I have noticed that some of the French marigolds have already been attacked. So I know that there's slugs in here, but at least they're going for the, the old Frenchies rather than anything else. I've had a few French marigolds pop up from last year. They do self-seed quite well. And I've also got a couple of tomato plants. So I might dig them out and pot them out when they get a little bit bigger. But they're all looking very healthy. And then along here, the cucumbers. Now this was the sickly side. Now you can see there's only four. So we lost one little guy down here. But we'll, we'll plant another one up. I need to try and get a couple of more cucumbers for outside as well. And the squash, they've all, near enough, all germinated. So we've got one per plug in these ones. At the back you can see we've got two. So I will need to pinch one of those out before they get any bigger. So we'll have plenty of squash this year. I think I'll be giving quite a few away. And then at the back... I've still got all my peppers and my tomatoes to go outside. I might give a few of them away as well. So that's a job now that the nights are getting quite a bit warmer. The aubergines aren't looking overly happy at the back there. There's a bit of new green growth coming on, but I don't think, don't know if it's warm enough to plant them out when I did. But we'll see how they go. The cucumbers over here are looking a lot healthier. These were the, the better plants out of the, the ten that I had. So I've got good good bets on them. And then along here we've got the the tomatoes. Oh, we've actually got some pinching out to do, so maybe I could show you some of that now. Now if you can see in here, we've got the main stem which is this thick stem working its way up here and then along here we've got the leaves that come out on their own little stems now they're the bits that we we want to keep however you see this little plant this is a little side shoot and you'll find them in the little crooks of each of the leaves against the stem now you don't want to touch anywhere near the top because you don't want to grow, pinch out the growing tip. So leave well alone up there. But these little guys, all you need to do is just come in and pinch them off. And that will just stop the energy going into these little side shoots, which will make the plant a lot bushier. And the idea of cordon tomatoes is that you want them to grow taller and taller and putting their growth into, putting their energy into vertical growth. So you just want to come along and make sure you're removing all of those side shoots. Now you can pop these in some compost and they should take root. So if you want to get some extra tomatoes in the ground I don't think it's too late, but you might get some, some late tomatoes. So I'm just gonna go, go along and just remove the side shoots from my tomatoes. If you've got a bush variety, you don't need to do this. So do check on the back of your seed packets.
one other job that I would do whilst I'm removing my side shoots at this time is, you see that beautiful tiny little yellow flower? That's a tomato flower and once pollinated that is going to become your tomato. However, we don't want them this early on. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to pinch those flower buds off because I don't want them to start producing fruit just yet. We want them to grow nice and tall, get nice healthy roots, and then we'll start wanting the fruit to, to appear. So I've just gone through, removed the flowers and the flower buds and the side shoots. We've got quite a few for this time of year. Oh, and the smell of tomato plants is just summer on the way. It's exciting, guys. Fresh salads with fresh tomatoes. You'll um, have to excuse my neighbour's side. I swear that plot is cursed. We never have anyone longer than six months, and don't blame me. I'm a nice neighbour. But I need to tackle this area down here. It's an absolute state. So I've got creeping thistle, cooch grass, all sorts of weeds in here. So I really need to tidy this up. One for the onions in these beds, and two for some plants that I do actually have in this border. I've got scabious, I've got some, I've got bay tree in there somewhere, and some succulents as well. So let's see what we can find amongst this jungle. So it's looking a little bit more tidy around here. I've managed to get quite a bit of that grass up and the bindweed and also the creeping thistles down here. So the onion and the garlic have got a lot more room to grow. They should start doing a little better. Now I have noticed that some of these onions are coming through quite gangly. Can you see there? And that's normally due to allium leaf minor. So they come through a little bit deformed but we'll see if they swell up into bulbs or not quite a few of them seem to have done it this year I never have much luck with onions but we'll keep them going and see how well they do a couple of the garlic are quite spindly as well it's really hit and miss this year with the, the old bulbs and I've weeded in that little onion bed down there they're coming out deformed as well so I think I might have allium leaf minor which is just a little bug that lives in the soil that eats into the onions but we've got some polyanthers down there we've got some hyssop we've got a couple of bunches of that to take home the scabious is looking a bit of a mess but I just couldn't bring myself to cut any of those blooms off and there's still plenty more so I've tied that up and that should just start to grow out a little better and then over there is the the bay tree which has put on quite a little quite a bit of growth so it wasn't put off too much by the the grass but this is full of tulips in spring so I can't plant too much in here and I can't dig too deep because of the tulip bulbs I keep saying to myself that when the tulips are done and they don't flower anymore. That's when I'll, I'll dig it out. And then over here, I have managed to, to knit up the gooseberry as best as I can. And you want it really to be as taut as possible so that the birds don't get stuck. I've never had a problem down here, but I will try and see if I can get that a little bit tighter. But that's just to keep the gooseberries for us and not the pigeons because the um, the old pigeons do love a gooseberry but they're huge this year come have a look now these aren't ready yet but these fell off when I was putting the netting on but they're probably the size of a, a small grape they are really quite big this year which is why I've netted this bush because it seems to have done the best out of the two the others are as full of gooseberries on the other bush they're just a lot smaller whereas these are really plump and big so keep these for ourselves not for the wildlife this year now another little job that I need to do whilst I'm down here 
is thinning out the carrots. So as you can see, these carrots are growing quite close to one another. So you want to leave the strongest one behind and just start to leave bigger gaps in between. So they're both pretty sturdy, but I'm going to take this little guy out. And you just want to work your way down the down the row and you just want to start pricking out those that don't need to be there so the smaller weaker little seedlings now they do say to do it on a still day as the carrot fly will be able to smell the carrots as you pull the the little seedlings up but I don't know if I believe that one so it's quite windy today so we'll soon find out won't we so I'm just going to go along this row and just pinch out the little seedlings that we don't want. It might seem a little strange to be pulling out seedlings that you've only just grown, but you will get a much healthier crop from allowing the carrots more space to swell and grow. So please remember to, to thin them out because otherwise they won't do too well at all and you won't get a crop of carrots. I need to get in here and harvest the radishes because they seem to have taken control of this bed now some of them are quite large and might be a little woody but we'll we'll see how they cut up in the kitchen but yeah i'm going to harvest all of these up and then tomorrow we can sow some more small crops in here and i'll do a what to sow in june video for you so let's see what radishes we can pull up So hidden away in there, we've got some beetroot that I forgot about. So these will start to swell up. I won't plant anything else in there. The light will get to these and these will now start to really take off. And it does just give these spring onions a little bit more of a chance. That fever few is quite big. So I'll need to think about removing that next year. But they do self seed everywhere, so I shouldn't be without any plants. But yeah, some hidden beetroot. I must sow some more of beetroot and some some spring onions so we'll do that tomorrow. Now this is why you should successionally sow your seeds because otherwise you end up with an absolute glut. Now I don't know what to do with 50 radishes or more so I think a few will be going out to neighbours. I might try and saute some of them down and you can make a pickle with them. So yeah make sure you time out your seedlings um, sow out the seeds every two to three weeks and keep that up otherwise you just end up with loads of them all at once and you don't know what to do with them but some of them are huge we'll have to see how they um, fare in the kitchen or whether they end up back on the compost heap we've managed to get a few jobs done down here today I haven't filmed it all it would have been a little boring it's quite a tidy up day weeding and trimming but I'll be back down here tomorrow for another another day down the plot. I want to sow some seeds, so watch out for that video. But I hope you're all having a, a lovely weekend. The sun is shining if you're here in the UK. And for all those others around the world, I hope you're having a lovely day. And um, I'll see you all again soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>